Good morning, YouTube. Welcome back to another episode of The Macadamia Show. I'm walking through some of macadamia history here. This orchard was part of a farm called Alamo in Danoon, which was planted by the Hargraves family. And these trees, some of them date back to 1965, mostly the H2 variety, which is now used as a rootstock. It's a uh, healthy nursery, a uh, healthy farm, but at the back here, um, I gave it away already, is a macadamia nursery. And we're going to meet the nursery owner, Tim Hills of Hills Horticultural. Um, he's well known to other people. He has amongst his customers, Garth and myself um, from the Australian Macadamia Channel. Tim is going to show us his nursery and how the nursery works and we're going to get some great information from him. Um, it's a reasonably long episode I expect so settle in with a cup of tea and have a look at how it works. Over to my left here you can see some irrigation lines along these trees. I think Tim's been experimenting with a little bit of irrigation and uh, around here are some of his trees and yeah, you can see the H2 nuts on the ground and they're, they're a big nut. Big thick husk, big thick shell. Not heaps of nut inside but apparently H2 is quite delicious. Anyway, let's go see if we can find Tim. And there he is. Hey Tim. <laughs> Thanks for agreeing to see me and show the people who view my channel your your operation. My it, pleasure. It's um it's a beautiful place actually and Dunoon's always struck me as one of the more beautiful places to grow macadamias, but this farm is a real is, is a, a real ancient thing. Spot. Is does it go over there? Is it is that yours too? Or is it or where, where does your no, farm? My boundary is just on the other side of this nursery here. Right. And then it goes up the hill there for, yeah, for that. across the gully and uh, up the another block of trees. And the original Alamo is off to that side. Correct. Right. Yeah. Have you been experimenting with irrigation on these ones over here, or is that? I have a little bit in the drought, um, just at nuts that I was giving some of those trees water. Right. Uh, Did it work? Yes, I think so. Right. So yeah. you made a difference in the crop in the end. Yeah, it, it tends to drop quite well in there. You know, Garth, because we both watch his channel, he, he did some hand watering of his A varieties and it seemed to do beautifully for him back in the uh, back in the drought. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I can't say I had the same luxury he did or you did. Yeah, I know a lot of people spent a lot of money on water down on the flats and it, it didn't make any difference at all. So yeah. I don't think they would do it again. No. No, of course, this year's the opposite, isn't it? Have you managed to get a harvest in? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, haven't been able to do the entire farm in one hit as there's been some wet areas. Yeah. That's been a challenge. Oh, you and me both. Uh, yeah. Even on a small place like this. Yeah. yeah. Have you got any results back? Are you, are you finding kernel recovery down from last year? Uh, slightly, yeah. Even with the mix of varieties I've got with some H2, which are generally lower, that I was still coming in at 32%. Oh, that's as high as an H2 ever yeah, gets. Yeah, yeah. It, it is. Yeah, that's a good result. Yeah, well, there's a lot of uh, 246 and 741 mixed in as well, so that pumps it up a bit. Yeah, I'll be lucky to get 30 at the moment. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm having a miserable year. Mm. But, uh, but yeah, it's, when you take over a nursery that needs rehab, it's a three-year process, and they warn me of that. Yeah. Yeah. But so you've got a nursery now. What prompted you to start a macadamia nursery? Where did you come into this? Oh, after leaving university, deciding that wasn't for me, I uh, kind of figured out I had green, a green thumb and went to TAFE and studied a diploma there. Uh, I got into some retail work in nurseries and wholesale as well. So I was working 
with citrus in wholesale in Queensland before I moved to the Northern Rivers and uh, got my first job grafting at Grey Plantations Okay. about six years ago. And it was probably five years ago that we bought this property and naturally I wanted to start my own nursery and uh, grow my own trees. Which you've done. Yes. That's, that's, um, that's great. And yeah. it's been growing since then, I take it? Yes, it, it has. And um, it was probably about a year ago we finally finished um, this side, which wasn't there originally. So... Yeah, right. it's been probably a three or four year process just to expand a little bit, yeah. which uh, included removing part of the orchard here. There were large trees here. Because sun's important, isn't it, for these babies? Very. Yeah, yeah. I've, you, um, I, I've had a chat with a couple of other nurserymen lately, and I know that this year one of the challenges has been there's been so many days of low sunlight that the stems don't thicken up as much as they normally do. Is is that an issue for you or have you? Not something I've noticed. Um, like we've got good airflow and good sun here. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I've noticed I haven't been ir irrigating nearly as much as what I usually would. Yeah. A nurseryman's dream really. Oh, bet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it's a big cost in you. It's a big input factor. Yeah. Yeah. It's just one less thing to worry about. So we'll go down and look at that that in a minute, but um, I think for some of the viewers, they need to sort of understand how a macadamia nursery works with its customers. Um, I've probably given a bad example because on the odd occasion I've come to you and you've had spare trees for me to pick up in small numbers, yeah. but that's not really how any of you guys work. It's a lead time of about how long? How long do customers normally need to order in advance to get trees from a nurseryman? Uh, Probably 12 to 24 months, right. yeah, depending on the size of um, their project. And is that because you have to grow the rootstock to order and then graft it to be ready just in time? That's right. So the rootstock can be raised um, generally anything up to 18 months before it's grafted. Right. And um, if the nursery doesn't have rootstock ready to go, then obviously they need to rewind a bit and raise raise the trees from scratch for the whole order yeah so for example everything that i've got is sold right now so right. if you want what everything order, we see here is sold that's right right so if someone wanted to order uh, trees from me now it would be a case of well the h2 that's falling on the ground at the moment yeah. would be their trees so you're looking at a two-year process, really. Yeah. Uh, maybe eighteen months. Yeah, to get it to get it in. Yeah. Yeah, and um, the as I understand it, people don't have to choose their variety at the time they order. They can just say we need X hundred trees. That's right. And then they have to tell you a certain time before which variety they want. That's right. How long before? Uh, before I sink you the wood. <laughs> oh, which is so, what? Is that four months before shipment or, or uh, six months? Or? Probably or a year, ideally. Right. Um, but it could be six months. It really depends on what time of year. Because if you're graphing in spring, it's going to come out very fast and possibly you can supply it in Christmas by Christmas. Right. Um, so in that instance, you know, maybe six, six months would be plenty. Because right. the cinctures are on the trees. For at least a month. And the cincture is the part where the graft meets the rootstock. Is that right? Or, no, or, or the cincture is a ring bark on the young trees that you're getting the wood off. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which which I think you, you cincture it in order to focus the carbohydrates or the sugars in the, the, the grafting stem, is that right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And that and then that, that increases the chance of the graft surviving. That's right. Okay, yeah. so yeah. cincturing's on the host tree. Yeah. That's right, and really you need to cincture all varieties. Um, so, some nurseries have good success with three, four, four without cincturing. Right. Um, but, you know, a lot, a lot of varieties. It's best to cincture the wood to be sure. Okay. Now you're using H two as your only rootstock in this in this lot That's here. Right. 
And um, there's some talk, I know, that some people were looking at using Beaumont as an alternative, and uh, I don't know whether that's a fad that's come and gone. Is it something you've ever tried or uh, not really interested? I don't have access to Beaumont rootstock, and if it is something I offered, it would kind of double the amount of options, if you know what I mean. Like, yeah. It, it could double the work. Yeah. And I really don't have space to be growing two rootstocks well, right the, now. Well, the testing they've done said there's not that much difference between the two anyway, and arguably H2 is still, still king in any case. There are some rootstock trials going on, and H2 and Beaumont are still some of the better ones in that trial. Yeah. Um, that'll be a lengthy process. And it might vary with results by area too, mightn't it? Like the Northern Rivers might. Yeah, well, H two has been proven greater than Northern Rivers. And and um, what uh, varieties grafted onto it? As grafted well. on top. So yeah. There's a lot of research and trials to do there. Yeah. Well, can we come down and have a look at the nursery in a bit sure. more detail? Because. Um, It'd be interesting to see some of these trees in various stages of um, development. And if we could maybe start with the rootstock that you use to, to make a new tree with. Sure, I can go about one better than that. I've got oh. some H2 seeds here. Oh, right. Let's start at the beginning. So these are H2 nuts. That's right. Bred in your own orchard. That's right. Um, it's been a great resource on this farm to have H2s. Right. Um, it can be hard to get at times. And, okay. And quality as well. Um, I have the luxury of being able to use the very best. Yes. Uh, a couple of characteristics of the H2 nut are this aborted it's embryo a, it's cavity. A, it's a dimple, isn't That's it? That's right. Also the adhering husk. Okay. Which, so, which, yes, which sticks a little bit. Yeah, they're two giveaways. So is, the H2. is this dense? That's not the same as the micro... Whoops, sorry. <laughs> it's not the same as the micro pile. The micro pile's... Oh, micro -pile. there's, a dent, there's a dent on that one, yeah. Mm. The micro pile's next to it. Uh, it by micro pile, it means microscopic I hole, micro I think. micro pile is that white. It's yeah. On the other side of the nut. Right. Pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah, and... If you're cracking nuts with a hand cracker, yep. that's the place to apply pressure. At the crack? Yeah. Right. No. I'd, oh, at the... At that, at oh, that I'll dent. show you. This one's a bit better. You've got that small white dash. Yes. I believe that's the micro pile. And right. And it's generally the thinnest part. And that's where to nut. apply pressure? Yeah. Okay. That's good to know. I've got one of those TJ's Macca crackers from Queensland, yep. and they're brilliant. Yeah. They'll crack a nut whichever way you put them in, but hand crackers, oh, yeah, <laughs> good good wrist exercise. So, okay, so it starts with seed, and then it goes into what a, a bunch of trays like this, I take I'm it. I'm using 45-cell trays like this. Yep. With some root trainers. Uh, the root trainers are these grooves these on the side? These vertical grooves to keep the roots going downwards. Okay. And... Gee, they look good. And the, the four litre pots that I use also have root trainers. I don't know if you can and, see that. And these these are the pots that you end up giving them in, into the customers. That's right. What happened to the plastic bags? Do plastic Are they going out of fashion? No, I or? get a little bit of root circling with plastic bags. Right. And, well, these are recyclable. Well, that's, recyclable. A, that's a plus. Yeah. yeah. So plastic bags are going out in macadamias as they are in supermarkets. Yeah. Amazing. Right, yeah. so, so it goes initially from there, and you're planting these in soilless media, aren't you? There's no soil allowed. That's right. It's a, just a seed raising mix from GoGrow. Everything I use it comes from GoGrow and Ballina. Okay. And uh, so they will sit in these trays for I don't know, a matter of months, okay. depending on the weather. Sure. And then we'll pot them up into their final pot. Uh, when they're a few months old? Yeah. And um, I suppose the growth rate depends on when you're growing them during the year, doesn't yeah, it? there's a lot of different yeah. kind of factors that are going to um, affect how it grows. And do they always grow with a single stem, or do you have to no. actually rip side bits yeah, off to get there? You'll get branching, yep. generally, and you'll have to come in and trim that up. Okay. And just, you're trying to grow one central leader. Yes. And, and I can see along here you've got 
what H two is in different stages of development. That's right. Probably, um, probably only a month or two apart. These ones, um, and then maybe a couple of months apart. And this tree would probably, or it could be anything from six to twelve months old, but. It would be ready to graft. That's ready to graft, isn't it, really? Because yeah. a couple of the baby ones I do buy, their stems are no thicker than that. Yeah. Yeah. And I notice when I do buy them, it has some of this original H2 foliage, this spiky foliage down the bottom. That's right. And then a graft at the top. Mm -hmm. But I suppose we should look at that next, shouldn't we? we or or uh, you then prepare them for grafting. Is is that... What do you do to prepare them for grafting Not after that? Lot. Um, sometimes we will take the top out once they get quite tall. Right. Um, like that's what's happened here. We've got yes. branching. Yep. Just to get sap flow, you know, to further down. Get the tree moving. Okay. Uh, pulsing, you might say. Yes. And just in a state of active growth. Okay. So that the graft will respond better. Right, so you're doing this with both the wood that you're going to put on and the actual tree itself, and all with the aim of what maximising the chances of success. That's right. Okay, wow, timing. Okay, so over over on this side here, is this what is this? What's yeah. this here? Okay, so these are all eight, four, nine graphs. Uh, this is what they look like when you graph them. Well, this one's a probably. But I don't see a graft on A month or two old. Oh. Um, that's the graft there. Okay. And it, if you look closely, it is actually starting to shoot. Oh, I see. This green shoot out the side. Yep. You've got bud swelling. Yes. Coming straight through this tape. Yep. We'll have a look at this tape later. This is fascinating. The tape's fascinating stuff, but basically the grafting is done using this tape. Which is looks like a film on the top of the on top of the thing, and obviously the, all this beneath this is H2. Correct. The leaves are supporting the plant, That's right. providing its energy. Yeah. With I, the graft on top. Yeah, I found you want probably at least six good leaves on a seedling yep. for it to um, be able to sustain, sustain the, the graft. Yeah. Right. Okay. And um, this next step here that we've got is obviously a more advanced graft. That's right. And you've got multiple stems coming out of this. That's right. Is yes, that's great. Okay. That's, that's what you want every to start with. Bud has come out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some nurseries will take. They would take all this off. Yes. To create a central leader, and that would push that out a bit faster. But at the expense of vigor, or not? No, not at all. Oh. Um, it just depends on whether the nursery does that practice or not. Okay. Um, and what they've agreed with the grower that the grower wants. Some yeah. of them are happy just to have a tree that's all branchy like this. Others will want a single leader. Yeah. I've heard that in Queensland, they're, they're starting to ask for grafts that are way down low so that um, mm -hmm. they can harvest closer to the ground or something. I don't know what, okay. their, I don't know what their agenda is, but... Yeah, it's I, probably for tree shaking as well. Oh, okay. To have the graft a bit lower down. Yeah. I mean, it, certainly from what I know, I couldn't care less. But yeah. uh, but uh, but anyway, that's that's apparently a modern trend. So yeah, these are maybe a month apart. Okay. Um, this is a month on from that. Yeah. And how? What's this third one over here? How much further is this one on? Uh, it would have been grafted probably. I'm not sure. Earlier in the year, see, so you get a lot of variation. These could have all been grafted at the same time and they've come out at different rates but right i can see on this one it was grafted in february 16 feb oh because of the label we're in may now and the graft is still this part here that's right and the all right so there's the 849 foliage on top h2 foliage underneath quite a difference between the two isn't it yeah and 849's a reasonably compliant tree to graft no it's not no they, they bit hard pretty patchy Right. Yeah. What are the really vigorous ones? What are the really best ones you find grafting? And, I mean, oh, like 741 and 246 graft very easily. Yeah. yeah. Well, 741 is a super vigorous tree, isn't it? Yeah. And 246 is, actually, it's the parent of 849, but it's, um, it's you know, I noticed from the saplings, they just want to jump out of the ground. Mm. Yeah. 
So there's the whole range. And, and this, this last one over here, this 849, is this in a position that's ready to sell to a customer yeah. or would you keep it longer? No, most customers would be happy to take it. Yep. Um, just with the state of the industry at the moment, they'd be happy to take that and plant it like that. Yeah. Um, it, it's with a hard flush and maybe another flush coming out would be ideal. Yeah. But at this time of year, people want trees in the ground. Well, in May, you'd sort of want them in by now, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah, but still got a couple of months. Yeah, I, I planted in May last year and there's nothing wrong with that. Mm. So, so um, no, I'm not planting in spring again, though. Um, can't, can't say I'm a fan of planting in spring, <laughs> given my experience. If, if you're not watering trees regularly, spring planting. Is, yeah, um, yeah. No, for a um, beginning farmer like me, it was too much, too much effort for my poor trees <laughs> and most of them died on me. But um, yeah. So around here, I mean, all these, all the rest of your nursery here, it's not all macadamia. So you've got some other little pet projects here, have you? Yeah, some of it is just uh, things I'm growing um, for my own farm. Right. Of, um, You're doing any doing avocados? A bit, a bit of intercropping where I've done row removal oh. on part of the farm. Okay. What do you mean putting different fruiting trees between rows of maccas? That's right. Wow, what are you trying? Uh, I'm growing jackfruit and cinnamon in the... Uh, wow, cinnamon in Australia? Yeah. I thought most cinnamon was imported. It is, 100%. Imported? Yeah. But we can grow it here? Yeah. That's a brilliant idea. I could show you some up there. Yeah. Um, oh, no, we, no, we don't need to. I guess it's a macadamia show after <laughs> all, but, but that's a fascinating idea. Do you do any avos? Oh, I have in the past. I've grafted most fruit trees, but not at the moment. Yeah. Avocados are... Highly specialised. I oh, know. I'm looking for a couple because um, my millennial daughters. I mean, they like the fact I'm growing macadamias, but you know, millennials mm. they want smashed avocado instead. So you know, you've got to. I've got to grow an avocado, yeah. or else they won't visit me. Um, but yeah. So okay. So all of this is is rootstock here. Or, I know this is recent grafts you've got. That's right. And do they stay in place pretty much until the customer needs them? No. Look, there is a fair bit of handling that goes on. Right. Um, Suckering, for example, but the rootstock wants to keep growing. Yep. So that needs to be removed. And okay, in this particular example, yeah, you've got some things the below the graft that you're removing. Right. I find myself doing that so with we, my babies. We have to wean them off. Yeah. Make sure they're the growing what they're supposed to. That's right. And what you actually have to pull each tree out to check? No, not or, at all. Right. But um, they, as you can see, not all of them are working. Usually the best ones that are working, you might pull them out and um, give them more them. sun. Yeah. Right. And if you're onto it, you'll quickly kind of split what's worked and what hasn't. Okay. Now, irrigation seems to be overhead. That's right. And um, is it fertigation? Do you do that or is it, it looks like you're using Osmocote for the most part. That's right. Yeah, no, yeah there's no fertigation going on. All fertiliser is put in the pot. You're probably doing a different kind of Osmocote than I'm doing. Oh, the stuff I get just from Bunnings. But, um, right. but um, yeah, yeah, so that's a... And then you're tagging them, I take it, by different varieties because I know the ones you've sold me are with different colour codes. Yeah, based on, I, um, I know it grows. We used to have a colour system, but I don't here. I'm just using whatever label I have because it's important to keep track of uh, what's what. Right. Even if you think you know what they look like when they're young. Yeah. It's good to have a date on there. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, you um, told me earlier about this group of trees here, um, which is um, the casualty of, of, I think, what's called a non-propagation agreement that growers yeah. have to sign. And um, for those who are un uninitiated, and I mean, I've signed one with you when I picked up my own trees. And so I can tell you what I know and you can correct me. I picked up macadamia variety uh, G, J, R and P from you. Yeah. And I had to sign a non-propagation agreement, mm -hmm. which is a binding contract that says, I will not use these trees to graft or, or to, to make my own trees. That's right. Um, uh, purely for the... Uh, production of kernel. Yep. And, and they're not available. If Joe Public wants a variety pea in their own backyard, you can't do that, can you? No, they're not for the backyard grower. Right. And, and you can't buy them and resell them either. Yes. 
So you, you, you really, you have to go to the end user and the end user must be a commercial macadamia grower. That's right. And that's the agreement you've signed or else you, you break your license. Yes, it's an agreement between the licensed nursery and the, and the grower. Right. But these trees are MCT1. Yeah. And as I understand it, they've got an even tougher propagation agreement on those. Well, the contract, the agreement itself is a much lengthier document. Right. Um, really, all growers should read all the conditions on that. Uh, I think it's the case with uh, GJPNR as well as these that if you sell your property, the purchaser has to take over the agreement. And agree to be bound by the conditions. That's right. Yeah. Otherwise, the trees can be destroyed. And and that kind of turned off the customer that was going to buy these trees. He decided, well, if I want to sell my property, I want to do it quickly. And I don't want to have to deal with Anfic or Tim Hills or whatever. Yeah. So um, he said, oh, look, just maybe we'll... Get some trees off you, but something else that's not quite not so under not under PBR. Tedious, yeah, right. It's a pity. These are beautiful trees, and uh, before anyone rings you, I mean, I, I know you've <laughs> told me they've been spoken for already because you know the demand for trees is so hot, yeah. and MCT one is the hot property at the moment too. I mean, plenty yeah. of people are willing to buy them and sign anything, yeah, um, me included. Absolutely. So. Yeah, and, um, but it probably is the most popular variety in the industry at the moment. The most right. planted, probably took over from A203, which was very popular there. It had a real years. run, didn't it? Yeah. And um, I know poor David Bell, who bred the A203, was upset because they didn't become a popular tree until his plant breeders' rights had run out and he couldn't get royalties anymore. Yeah, that was very unfortunate. Unfortunate for him, because you want him to be paid for his work. Mm. But just on these ones, I mean, the graft here is like way down here you yeah. can see the old tape there and there's that much growth on top of the tree so how old are these saplings in total uh, well probably maybe 18 months to two years it's hard to say because i don't have a label on every tree right and, you know varying kind of growth rates but at its at its tallest this one's taller than me yeah look some of them are pretty big these are six litre pots and that would definitely be two years old. Yeah. What a healthy specimen. Yeah. And what it's just, it's so, still soilless media. It's not growing in soil at all. That's at correct. Potting mix and Osmocote. Yeah. Wow. Well, there's, but, a, there's an ad for Osmocote. Uh, Gosh. That's we a. We um, keep soil out of the nursery. Yeah. Um, because of Phytophthora. Right, so just on that, what we've got here is, I take it, this is weed mat. This black stuff. That's right. But does that keep Phytophthora out by itself or? or? No, so I've got 10 mil aggregate. Um, it's probably at least uh, 15 centimetres of that. And then under there I've got a heavy duty plastic which keeps the soil from coming up. Okay. You get ants and worms bringing soil up. And then the pathogens with it. That's right. Yeah. And, uh, the plastic's good because it also moves water off sure. the nursery into drains. Okay, and that, and I guess that then assists the drainage of these babies in the pots because yeah, you, you don't want the water. You don't want any resistance. You want the water to come out of those pots when it wants to. Right. That's that's fascinating. So, Tim, would you mind showing us a bit about how you make one of these macadamia trees from 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 scratch? Because I I know you showed me up in your nursery where you got some of your wood from and um and um and the grafting process. But yeah, um, we'll go for a walk. Yeah, sure. This is obviously your operations shed here. That's right. It's been here. I don't know how long, but um, but you repurposed it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I think you've got both. A similar mower and a similar harvester to me, which is a complete fluke. <laughs> I've got to bring you some harvest wheels, actually, from my one. I've got some spares. I um, forgot to bring them today, but I'll drop them around. The, um, this is all H2 in here, I take it? Uh, no, it's mixed. Oh, is it? Uh, yep. 
but, uh, yeah, a lot of these. But we can tell this H2 by its round, this is rounded leaf yeah, here. it's basically the opposite of what you see in the nursery, which is a very spiky yeah. uh, seedling. They're nice, uh, soft, round leaves. Yes, when no spines, yeah. yeah. But the, the babies are like prickly as anything. Yeah, it would be nice if it was uh, the other way around. It would, I guess it would, yeah. You've got plenty on the ground here, so I'll avoid stepping on nuts, but some some good stuff here yeah obviously there's been storm damage um like you can see some in that tree yes um, it's missing something time, sometimes you know this is the noon super cells do come through and wipe out trees completely so yeah there are replacement trees here yes um mainly 741 down over there yeah here. and this looks like a different kind as well this has got a long thin Yes, uh, I think that's 660. Right. Well, I know what those look like. I've got some on my farm. But here's... Okay, so here's some younger trees here. Yeah, these are A203. Right. Um, and would you use these for cincturing? Yep, absolutely. I've been taking wood off these for a year or two. Okay. I think it's about three years old. Okay. I actually had... Oh, half a kilo of nuts on it. Oh, nice. Yeah, apparently it's a it's a very good tree. I've I've not put in any A two O threes yet, but I may as gap fillers down the track. Mm. So you're looking for a certain thickness of wood to graft onto. Yep. A so rootstock is you, it? Yeah, you want to match your cincture diameter with the seedlings that you're going to have ready to graft. Right. So it takes a little bit of planning. But you're not actually measuring, are you? You no. just, it's hand and eye. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So this is something that comes with experience of thousands yeah. of trees, I so, imagine. I have got a couple of cinctures left in here. You can so, see okay. where it's been ring barked. I'm going to get in close. That's been ring barked entirely, but see, on my limited understanding of plants, that would kill the branch. But why hasn't it killed the branch? Because you still got some water being transported right but generally we sever i'll just show you with the pliers here sure, yeah, yeah. when you're severing the plum layer completely yes all of the sugars will accumulate here or they get, there they get trapped further up that's right and so you've got a lot more carbohydrate in this wood and then it's a sitting duck that's right right uh, it could vary anywhere from four to twelve weeks, or if you forget about it, it could right. be longer. I see you've, there's another couple of cincture points there in yeah. the middle of the tree, and it will grow back over eventually. Yes, and join up with that. Oh, and that's keep good. Growing. Yeah, but at that point, yep. where it's all swollen. You can harvest it. Okay. And um, generally you've... trim it up. But you've chopped the top off there. That's, That's deliberate. Right. Yeah, yeah. That, that won't be useful as grafting wood. Oh, I see. So yeah. you want to you want Usually to. It's only sections on the branch that are useful. Okay. And if I know I haven't got really thick rootstock, or well, as thick as that, I'd get rid of that too. Right, and you cut... want to leave as much waste as you can in the field. Yes. Best to trim it. Out in out while you're doing yeah. it. On a large scale nursery, they do rip that, that canned wound oh, the bark. Right. Well, um, that's no good. That could lead diseases yeah, in, it? That's right. Um, so you completely defoliate it? That's right. Because what leaves would otherwise use too much energy? Yeah, no, it would not survive. Okay. With, with the grafting yeah. process. Okay. And um, there's one other here, so I'll take that through. And um, next to it here, this is this looks interesting. What's what have you done here? Yeah, this looks like a stump. Earlier, stump with it. Some big storms here, and this was a H2 tree that got severely damaged. The stump and looks dead. It does. It's, it probably it's is. not though. Yeah. It's probably some bark beetle in there decomposing that. Yeah. It's still alive on this side. Right. And um, so, what did you put in there? Did you actually use a graft technique? That's right. So it was just one sucker coming up on this H two. Yeah. And I've grafted it 
Ooh, I can't see where the union is anymore, but I think it was around here somewhere. Oh, so you didn't graft it on the trunk, you grafted it onto Correct. the sucker. Yeah. And what is this variety? This is A38. Right. Now, it hasn't flowered yet. Big long leaves, but no spines. That's interesting. I think it will flower this year. It's a, I mean, like the way, it, look, the ones I've seen on Nick Savage Farm, very, very upright. It doesn't seem to want to grow out at all. Mm. And it's got lots of sun to grow out if it wanted to. It will willow down eventually. Right. Sure. Oh, yes, I've heard it. They have willowing branches. So has that now become a source of cincture wood as yeah, well? Sure has. Right. And I think you showed me one. I think the R's that you sold me a while ago there, you've that, done this yeah, as well. Yeah, I have, have been grafting, uh, top working some of the new varieties. Into, um, just to get some resources. It's a great way to recycle yeah. trees, particularly after storm damage. Yeah. yeah. And um, they're nice and sheltered in amongst these other trees as well. Mm. Right, so we've got our um, we've got our cincture wood. Is that what you call it, or, or cyan wood or budwood? Cyan wood, budwood. Yeah. Okay, I know budwood's a term I've heard before. I call it cyan wood because a cyan is a piece of wood that has multiple buds on it. Okay. Whereas um, if you're grafting or budding apples or citrus, you might call it budwood because you're only cutting one bud out. Ah, oh, yes. But it's the same thing. Yes. Just the genetic material. Sure. So from these we can make A203s. That's right. And uh, is grafting at this time of year successful given that winter's coming or does it that, does that reduce the success rate Probably a bit? Probably the best time to give it a rest. Um, because, yeah, they're just very slow to come out. Yes. Unless you're trying to get ahead. Um, you've got, got a lot to do. Some of the nurseries do. Well, you certainly couldn't sell this one in spring. That's right. This it's, year. It's, probably just it's May now. It's yeah. going to sit there and not do much. So you may as well graft it in spring. But right. Apart from getting ahead of the work, it's, it's not going to get you a tree faster, really. No. So... Is this some other graft wood that you got earlier? Yeah, this is some 246. Um, oh, that's where it is. Yes. Yep. That does look a bit like 246. Big long serrated, big long leaves with a bit of serration. And what there's, there's some that are what absolutely ready to go. Yeah. And how long can you store them without losing the. Uh, Losing the, you know, surely you have to do it do quickly. Up, up to 10 days. That long? If, if it's good quality wood. Wow. And it's stored well. Um, which, you know, depending on your opinion, there's lots of different ways to store it. I won't go into that. But no, but you don't refrigerate them or anything? No, no. I wouldn't put it in the fridge. Okay. Um, but up to 10 days is all right. It means you could transport yeah. it if you needed to. Or it's Obviously, straight away is best. Yes. Or within one or two days. Yeah. So you try and do that. Yes. yes. You don't want unsuccessful grafts no. floating around. Well, if, if the graft doesn't work, you've got that whole process to go through again of cincture and wood. Um, yeah. And grafting. So. Yeah. If a, if a base H2 tree, like your rootstock tree, doesn't take a graft, can you reuse the H2? Yeah. You can reuse it. Yeah, so at least can. that's not lost. We call that a regraft. Okay. And, um, you can have two or three goes at a seedling. Yeah. Usually. Okay. Well, that minimises waste. Yeah. So over on the left here, you've got, what are these? Are these rootstock trees, are they? Yeah, these ones are in four litre bags. There's some, I'm, I was still phasing out of bags into pots. Yeah. So. I didn't have a problem planting bags. You just yeah. take a Stanley knife and cut down the side a little yeah. bit and take care not to cut too many roots. But I guess it's more waste. For, unless you're recycling, if you're recycling, but these look like these look like healthy specimens, and yep. so you are you going to show us a graft now? Sure. Oh, this is a treat. So, so what are our tools here? We've got. Okay, that's for cinturing. That's for cinturing. So we've done this. Board. We're using a mini block plane with an adjustable blade. That looks like uh, it's a venerable age. Um, it's a woodworking tool, really. Right, yes. It's small enough to hold with one hand. And there's the blade on the underside. Yeah. Well, that doesn't cut through a whole branch. Obviously, that's like a shaver or something. That's right. It just takes thin slices of timber off. 
Okay. And Secretaries, important, sharp, right? clean. Yep. You clean them in metal Sterilized. or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was told to do tape. that. Yep. And of grafting course. tape. This one's called buddy tape. Okay. Most nursery switched to this oh, four years ago. Um, slowly but surely, everyone got sick of what the old tape, like right. PVC tape, which needed to be removed. Oh, plastic tape. Yeah. And, and this was... isn't plastic? No, this is rubber. It's, 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 um... So it's a natural... That's right. Right. Yeah, and it, it stretches... Like chewing gum. Yeah. And gets thinner that way too. Does it actually have adhesive or does it rely on just the rubber to stick to things? Um, it just seems to stick to itself. And the wood. Well, then it just, yeah. you can just crunch it up like, wow, yeah. into nothing. Because I know, I mean, obviously all the trees I've bought have the grafting tape on it. Mm. And it eventually goes with blackish colour and That's then right. falls off, for, I mean, over yeah, years. It's very user friendly for the nursery and the grower. Well, if I can then see where um, where it's grafted. In the past, there was a whole other job of painting grass. Oh. Um, you what tie them up and paint them, and then you have to untie them. Um, it's a whole extra step. It's so. a pest, yeah. Anyway, well, this makes it nice and easy. Yeah. So what do we do with our host tree then, obviously? Okay, so you put all this effort in to growing this nice, healthy tree, and then you're just going to cut it down to where you want to graft. Um, this will vary with different nurseries, but um, some will graft down here. I would probably go up here. Well, you've got to match your other wood, haven't That's you? That's right. So. But this will also give me a chance at a regraft, a good regraft here. If this one if doesn't it, work. If it doesn't right. work, yeah. Well, you're doing this one for YouTube, just, so this one's going to work, you know. You're just making a bit of a clearing. Right. You don't want to take more leaves off than you have to. Okay. You want as much on the Energy production. Possible. Yep. So you've got one of the A203 sticks That's that right. we've just cut off. Um, what are you trying to do now? I'm trying to match this up as close as possible size wise. Right. Um, you know, a, a good grafter wouldn't do this. They'd instinctively just grab wood and, and know by the look and feel just at a glance what they need. Yeah. But, uh, well, because you've got to repeat this thousands of times. That's right. Yeah. Um, so that looks about right. That's about right. Yeah. Okay. So I'll leave two walls on. By walls you mean groups of walls buds? Walls of buds, yeah, yep. probably that and that. Yeah. But I won't, I won't cut it yet. Okay. I'll, I'll, um, I'll wait and see how my planing how my goes. Planning goes cause if it doesn't work out, I might need to travel up here and use that bud. Okay. Um, some people will graft, um, cut this first. Yes. So that this isn't drying out. Okay. But when you're grafting, you work pretty fast, so it really doesn't matter. You need to do both pretty quickly, don't <laughs> yeah. you, effectively? So, right. That's what you've planed off. Wow, that was quick. And you just get, you know the angle over time. Yeah, I mean, I think for the sake of our viewers, I need to say this looks a lot easier than it is. Yeah. <laughs> you make it look yeah, easy. Yeah, that's too small. Right. I really want the whole perimeter lining up. So the aim is to have exact surface areas that match? That's right. Like pieces of a puzzle? Yeah. Okay. Some people will just match up one side. Yes. They would tie that on. Yes. That, that falls into the dodgy category, ah. as far as I'm concerned. Because of risk of disease entry or, or uh, failure? Just, or... just want full contact, really. Yes, yes. So I'll just grab another bit. It's a bit bigger. Okay. Oh, that's a slightly better match. Much closer. Two rails. Okay. The holding and tying technique is something to be practiced. Let me get around the other side of you so so I won't hopefully bump yeah. you while you do it. Okay, so there's the two bits of graft that are basically matched really closely together. And you're now... Once you get it started, it will hold itself on. It's like a tourniquet, isn't it? Yeah. Just making sure I've got good contact. All the way. This is fascinating, guys. We're, we're watching a new macadamia being made. So quite tight on the graft union. Yes. And 
just not quite so tight or stretched out over the buds so that they can break through easily. Why would the top need covering? Is it just that's, moisture that's protection? That's where water's going to get in. Well, water's going to get in? Yeah. Right, I thought you were trying out. to keep it in. No. But, um, wow. Want that fully sealed. Okay. So, that's a grafted macadamia. That's it. So. And how after how long would you know whether that worked? This time of year, it could take two months. Wow. In spring, it could come out. You know, within a week or two, you could start to see swell, swelling buds. Yes. And it could pop out. And then away. Quite far. Yeah. And then, I mean, so to compare that, that's about, you've taken off really maybe a third to a half of the height of the original mm -hmm. H2. Um, is an immediate reaction as it will tend to sucker out and produce more more shoots out the side uh, it doesn't like the graft or, or no generally it will if you've got really good contact here it's yeah. going to pop out straight away usually with a couple of the top uh rootstock yeah there's dormant buds in here yeah they'll come out as well and, and is that quite firm to touch now or is yeah. it you, you you're not afraid it'll wobble or, or oh, i wouldn't pick it up by it or anything but, no um try not to knock it well one of the tips i was given is when you're actually buying them and you're going to pick up your trees always lift a tree below the graft yeah. just in case it might pull it off well, if, it, if it pulls it off it's a bad at tree at the time of sale you should be able to lift it by the graft yeah but you don't want to ask for trouble well, i yeah. guess yeah so that's that's a whole that's a whole tree then multiply that by several thousand and you've got a happy customer. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously there's an efficiency thing. You must have to do lots of these in an hour, do you? Or, yeah, look, or... I have done a fair bit of contract grafting over the, over the years. And What's, What can a gun grafter do? Oh, 500 plus a day. A 500? Yeah. Of what we've just seen? 50 or 60 trees an hour. One a minute? Yep. <laughs> yep. That's, um, gee... That must be hard work. How do your fingers feel at the it end is. of a day? Oh, yeah, your hands uh, take a lot of punishment. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. yeah. And it's all done. I mean, you can't machine. You can't do this via machine or anything. No. I know that the AMS did some research into different kinds of grafting and, and they had techniques called mini graft and micro graft and standard graft. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know that you need to go into all of them, but what did we just witness there? That's probably a mini or a standard graft. Okay. Um, in the past, trees were generally grafted very thick, like like my thumb thickness. Okay. Uh, and it's yeah, as the nut price has gone up over the years, the the desperation the, for trees. The size, yeah, that's right. <laughs> the size has come down in grafting. Yeah. And you've not seen a drop off in orders or anything with the with the recent drop in the macadamia price. No, not at all. No, I mean I'm still keen, obviously, but but yeah. others, um, it um, it seems like um, they're all still spoken for, and um, yeah, so the, the orders keep coming in, and certainly the ones you've supplied me, they've all taken like a fish to water, mm. I and mean, some of those those ones I've just gone back yesterday and had a look at them, and they're all um, Great. they're all very happy campers, I must say. Mm. Yeah. So do you ever? go and see a customer's premises every so often and, and take a look at the results you've got or you, you assume that if, you know, no news is good news? Sometimes, you know, I have a different relationship with each grower and some of them I actually go and get budwood from and right. others I never hear from again. Yes. But, um, well, you've heard from me a few yeah. times. I'll come, I'll come back and pester you regularly, but but um, no, that's um, that's a good thing. And and most of the customers are local, are they? Yeah, I, yeah. yeah. I try to keep everything local. I mean, it's my nursery is probably only fits twelve thousand trees in it. Twelve thousand. Uh, yeah, obviously that fluctuates with yeah. the seasons. Like there's a big gap in there at the moment, so I need to raise some seed and do more potting. Yeah, but twelve thousand seems really like not, a lot. Well, yeah. it's not really much. Um, yeah, and yeah, I suppose so. But then the um, I suppose the hours are long, no matter how many trees you've got. That's right. Um, and I do everything myself here too. So right. Plenty of work for one person. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and obviously you don't do your grafting on the back of a truck mostly, but you I want do, to do actually. You it's, do, it's right? It's actually really good because I can graft wherever I want, and I can sanitize out in the, the field. Tray. 
Yeah. Uh, it's a great workplace. If someone like me has a weird and wonderful, you, you know, you watch my videos, I've got, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of the 788. I think that's a fabulous tree and it's just going like crazy. Yeah. Is it, is, is it possible for a nurseryman like yourself to come out and grab wood yeah. and graft from that? Definitely. But I'd have to sign it. I'd have to sort of rub off the bark for you. Yeah, you could sink your branches yourself. And um, then say, come out. Yeah. Right. Or bring me the wood. Or yeah. bring you the wood, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, because I, I think I've, I'm falling in love with the 788, although right. that's a, an unwise thing to do until it starts cropping for me. <laughs> I just think it's a beautiful tree and it's okay. extremely vigorous. Mm. Yeah, it's um, it's the one they grow in China sometimes and that's a challenging environment. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, um, wow. Well, look, Tim, that is a wonderful demonstration of, of that. I mean, I don't think there are anything, any other movies of macadamia nurseries on YouTube, but this is where it all starts and when you multiply all that out over the northern rivers um you guys do an incredibly essential job without you the industry wouldn't exist and um yeah so it's look it's it's a privilege being able to visit you today yeah, and thanks for coming i've been meaning to do a proper video on grafting for a while so yeah that's good right to partner with you on it. no no worries and and um yeah i hope um i hope there's um some appreciation as well from some of my viewers who have really just don't get the chance to even see this mm -hmm. and um yeah so wonderful well thanks guys we're going to sign off now goodbye from me and um tim thank you again bye bye bye, -bye.